Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today we're continuing on with our <coughs> sorry, AVRC tutorials. Um, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through the setup of your AVR programmer. Um, so, And we're also going to go through some basic uh, ideas of software to get into the finer details of this thing, and we're going to write a quick piece of software. Um, this is probably going to be a bit of a longer video, so if you'll bear with me, I promise the wait will be worth it. So, for the setup, I've already put in the chip we're going to be using. This is an ATmega328P. Uh, this is the kind of chip you can get out of the Arduino. You can get this online. Um, it's the chip we're going to be using. I've got the appropriate crystal for it. This is a 20 megahertz crystal, but it'll also accept a 16 megahertz crystal. I've got the programmer, the AVR Pocket Programmer. And I've got the cable for the programmer, and I've got this thing, which is a breakout board from SparkFun, which breaks out the cable for that I just showed you uh, into all these pins. Because as you can see, even though there are yeah, 10 pins here, there's less than 10 here, so some of it is redundant. And last thing I've got on my computer, I've opened up the data sheet, as you should. It's in the description of the last video. Um, opened it up to, it's a PDF, opened it up at pin 1, and I'm looking at the 28 DIP, PDIP, that's pin configurations. So, let's get started. <clears throat> First thing you're going to do, is you're going to take your crystal, you're going to hook it up to pins XTAL1 and XTAL2, those are pins on this 9 and 10. Now, it starts counting, there's a little notch here at the top, and at the notch on the left starts at pin 1. So we're going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. So it'll count from 1 to 14 and then from 15 to 28. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop in the breakout board and I'm going to rotate it this way so you can see it better. And I've got a whole bunch of jumper cables ready to hook this stuff up. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to hook up ground, which is at the top of the breakout, and it's also pin eight on the board on the chip. Just can't grab a hold of it. There you go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should push that. There we go. And now let's hook up 5 volts. And that's pin 7 on the chip. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So now it's got power set wired up. Let's hook up the actual programming pins. Now, programming this chip, it uses something called an SPI, which is a serial peripheral interface. And those are MISO, MOSI, and S-Clock, which uh, you can read more about. And so those are the those are the pins that are actually on the chip that are going to receive the code from the programmer. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up MISO. And if you look on the data sheet, MISO is actually pin 18. So starting at the back, that's 15, 16, 17. 18. Okay, then I'm going to hook up a clock, SCK. SCK is pin 19, so that's one above the MISO. Now the reset, which will reset, which will reset the chip. Get that in there. We go. It's actually the first pin on the chip push these out of the way so you can see a little better and then the last one is MOSI which is hooked up to pin 17 one below MISO and there we go so that is the programmer for the chip all hooked up so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cable what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at this end. This is the 3x2 end. And what you're going to do is this, the orientation matters, is you're going to 
if you've got the breakout lined up the way I do, you're going to put it so that the cable pulls away from from you towards the chip. Okay. So once you've got that, you're going to take the other end, and you're just going to go ahead and slot that right into your programmer. And there we go. So that is the basic setup. So next, what I'm going to do is, I'm assuming you've already set up the drivers and such for the AVR Pocket Program, because this is the one we're going to be using, or you've already set up the drivers for whatever program you're going to be using. Uh, I bought this, I use this one because it is the cheapest one on the market, and it works beautifully. Um, the instructions can be found on the SparkFun page for this. So let's go ahead and switch over to the computer so we can look at the actual, well, what we're going to be doing with this. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've opened up the data sheet, which I, you should have open, and I'm going to go over here and look at the pin configurations. And I'm looking at the 28D, uh, PDIP, which is the pinout for the DIP version of the AT Mega 328. And if you look at the pins, they're arranged using these three character call names, uh, PC6, PC1, PB5, PD5 etc cetera, etc cetera. so what that it what it means is that they're each referencing a, spe a specific port so this is port C 6 port D 7 port B 3 and each of the, each of those numbers actually refers to a bit within the byte that is that port so each port represents a byte of data and you can write to a specific port using each bit in that byte, which introduces this concept of registers. Now, what a register is, is it's a specific point in memory that serves a function for the microcontroller. And there are two registers I'm going to introduce today, but they are extremely important and you're going to use them throughout the rest of these tutorials. But the two I'm going to introduce are DDR, and port. Now DDR, the little X's refer to each of those ports, so that would be DDRD, DDRC, DDRB. So DDR is the direction register, meaning it sets it as an input or an output. Port X set, sets the state of that pin, so it's either on or off. So, what we're going to do, we're going to write a very simple piece of code which is just going to turn on a specific pin and turn off a specific pin with um, a delay in between. So let's pick a pin, let's uh, go back to our data sheet and let's just pick say PB0, so that's pin 14, it's the bottom left hand pin and it's the zero the zeroth bit in the B port. Oop. There we go. So if we look at D D R B, so that's the B port and we're writing a direction to it, we have to set that to a specific value. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, remember it's one byte of data, so that's eight bits. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8. Now each 0 represents an input and a 1 represents an output. So this is P B 0. This is the 0 bit and we're setting it to 1 which is an input. Uh, an output, sorry. I'm just setting the rest of these to 0. You can set these all to 1 but we really don't care about these so by setting it to zero we're setting it as an input now the second one we're going to write to is port B and to turn it on 8 we're going to write 1 to the port B register in the port B 0 bit and that's going to turn it on then to turn it off we're going to write 0 to the port B. So all these are off 
but this is on and then by switching it to a zero we turn it off so this is on in the port zero bit port b zero byte bit sorry and this is off and we're going to put a delay in between all right so that's it so <coughs> Uh, I'm assuming at this point you have downloaded and installed AVR Studio. There's AVR Studio 5. There's a link to it in the last video. So you're just going to go ahead and click New Project. And you're going to come to AVR GCC, uh, C, and you're going to create an executable project. And let's just call this, say, I don't know, um, Blink LED and it's going to go ahead and create that project. But the first thing you have to do is actually select the microcontroller you're going to be using. And we're using the Mega AVR series. And if you scroll down, where is it? It is the AT Mega 328P. Hit OK. It's going to go ahead and put that together for us. And we're just going to go ahead and click on BlinkLED.C. which opens up the C file. And so what it's already gone ahead and done is it's uh, included the basic include file. It's given us the main task and it's created our while loop. So let's go ahead and start modifying this. Now the first thing you're going to want to do, and this is a very important define statement, is define fcpu. Now fcpu um, is defining the speed of the clock you're using with your CPU. So with this one, we're using a 20 megahertz clock, so that's 20 million cycles per second. So this is used by the library we're going to include, which is avrdelay.h. Um, the delay has a series of wait commands in it, so you can wait for milliseconds, microseconds, and it's a lot easier than the AVR uh, Studio's built-in AVR wait for cycles, which is complicated if you're not familiar with a little bit of assembly structure. So it's this is used by that so it knows exactly how many cycles to wait for for a certain time period. Okay, so on top of your while loop you're going to start by defining your direction register. So that's DDR and then the port B equals OXO, and we're writing it in hex. So 1 in binary is 1 in hex, so that's OXO1. Then we're going to write to the port B register, port B equals 0. So we're turning all of the pins that are on port B off. Now we're going to write to port B. We're going to turn port B bit 0 on. We're going to delay milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds, so that's one second. We're going to go back to port B. We're going to turn it off. We're going to turn everything off. And then we're going to delay another 1000 milliseconds. And that's it for this program. So we've defined DDRB, the direction for port B. We've only turned the zeroth bit as an output. We've turned the entire register we've turned the entire port off. And then we've turned only the zero bit on. We have waited for a thousand milliseconds, that's one second. We've gone ahead and turned it all off. And then we waited again and then it just jumps back. So this idea of registers is extremely useful because you're gonna write to them for everything for from pin states to reading pins to your ADCs, your baud rates, timers, etc., etc. So you're going to really want to get to know your registers and you're going to want to know your hex. And also your logic unary operators such as AND, OR, NOT, and XOR because they're going to become quite heavy in later videos. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to build, build solution. And what that's going to do is it's going to construct all of the files for this. Uh, most importantly, the one we're going to be using, up. Oh, I have to actually put an H there. There we go. Let's try that again. 
and it's going to produce all the files. Most importantly, is uh, the most important of which is the .hex file, which is the actual machine code that is going to be sent to the microcontroller. All right, so it's gone ahead and built it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up AVR Dude Assistant, which is a program I wrote and I gave you a link to in the last video. You're going to select your part number, which is the AT Mega 328P. The programmer, which if you're using the AVR Pocket Programmer, which is the one I'm using, you're going to scroll down and you're looking for USB Tiny Simple USB Programmer. Now the first thing I like to do is just erase the chip. You're going to go ahead and pick program. And if you're using the AVR Pocket Programmer, make sure it's plugged on, plugged into the breakout board the way I showed you, with the, uh, m with most of the uh, cable pointing towards the pin, uh, pointing towards the chip. And there's a switch on the programmer, and you're going to set it to power target so that it's supplying power to the board. So once all, all that's made sure you're going to hit OK. And that just erases all of the stuff that was already on the chip. Okay, so now you're going to go and find, oops, you're going to go ahead and find the project file, which is under your documents, AVR Studio, Blink LED, Blink LED, Debug, and there's the hacks. So if you go back here to finish up, don't erase the chip, browse, and documents, AVR Studio, Blink LED, Blink LED, debug, hex. And you're going to go ahead and hit program. Little alert's going to come up. Hit OK. And it'll start blinking because it's writing all of the data. And there we go. Now it's just making sure everything is there like it should be and that should do it. So now we're going to switch back over to the board. Okay so here we are uh, so we've got our board programmers powered up and so is this and if we look at it you can see that the program we've done has n no effect or no visual effect at least. So what I've got here is my handy dandy multimeter and I'm just going to set this to that voltage level and then I'm going to contact this pin and ground so you can see it turning on and turning off now if you don't believe me what we can do is if I remove that turn it off and just add a couple components to our circuit so here I've got a resistor, and I'm just going to go ahead and hook that up from here to an arbitrary second pin, like that. And then I'm just going to take an LED, take the longer end, connect that to the row in the resistor, connect the other end through this jumper back to ground, and if I kill the lights, you can see it turning on and off with a one second delay in between. So there you have it. We've gone through the setup of the programmer. Uh, I am going to be using this setup uh, throughout for future videos. And uh, we've gone through the basics of registers, which are going to be important for our next video, where we're going to go over the next regi register, which uh, is involved in input and output, which is the input register, or the pin X register. So uh, this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.